Welcome back. Today's video is about Minnesota. Minnesota shares its northeastern border with Lake Superior and is famous for the agates found here. Some of the rock formations that compose Minnesota are igneous, metamorphic, and sedimentary rock. Now, some of the gems and minerals we're, we're going to be able to go over are gold and agate from Lake Superior, as well as thompsonite and bingamite. Now, we also have fossils that come from various locations within the state. First thing, let's go to gold. All right, gold, like a lot of the Midwestern states, are not so heavily prevalent in deposits. Now, that doesn't mean they don't exist. This gold was brought here by glacial movements in the last ice age. The glacial movements that occurred didn't necessarily compose big amounts that are commercially viable, but it did compile it and, and concentrate it enough that if you know, learn to read the land, as a small prospector, you're going to have a lot of fun. It's actually a hobby that's growing within the state right now rapidly. Recent load discoveries in the past decade have caused a huge interest and resurgence by commercial mining companies. For recreational gold prospectors, though, Minnesota has plenty of opportunities to go out and get on the gold. Several active clubs, though, will help you get started if you so choose to. There has been reports of gold in Minnesota since like the mid-1800s. The first documented gold, though, was at Zumboro River near Orinoco, Minnesota. This area is still worthy of your investigation today if you're going out that way. Historically, the area that received the most attention, however, was the region around Lake Vermilion, where there was a short-lived gold rush in 1865, I believe. Anywhere around Lake Vermilion, Trout Lake, Sodan, and Eli in northern Minnesota are totally worth checking out if you're going that way too. Near the border with Canada, another short-lived gold rush occurred at Rainy Lake near present-day International Falls. Several mines popped up in the summer of 1894, and in the past decade, several mineral exploration companies have discovered new deposits of extremely rich ore in the far northeastern part of the state with core samples indicating high concentrations of gold, nickel, copper, and the platinum group metals. These new discoveries show extremely high potential, and it will be interesting to see how these resources develop. Worth mentioning as well is the new gold rush going on in Minnesota. So the Department of Natural Resources reported significant gold findings on state forest land from Cook to near Babbitt along the Vermilion Iron Range. The reports say that they have found lots of gold grains across the area, including several hot spots with so-called pristine deposits. By far the highest concentrations were found on state land south of Sodan and north of Embarrass, with a new gold mine just 40 miles northwest of International Falls. To be honest, the new mine claims to have a mineral source of about 4 million ounces of gold. You know, that, that's 4.7 billion worth of gold. The DNR says it uses the survey findings to help plan the land use in the area, which means they're likely to keep it open to prospecting and mining in future years. Their findings are interesting, however it's not just the amount discovered, but what it looks like. If the grains are finely weathered, smooth and on the surface, then they could have come as far away from the Arctic and were left here by glaciers, that's what a lot of the gold is. But if they are rough and misshapen, the deposit could be within a few hundred feet, most likely underground. And now on to the agates. So more precisely, Lake Superior Agate. Lake Superior Agate was made the Minnesota State Gemstone in 1969. And if you really want to hunt for these beauties, it helps to know how to identify them. They don't look like they do polished on the ground. Sometimes they do, and that's a different type that you would know if you read this book. It's a book called The Agates of Lake Superior, Stunning Varieties, and How They Are Formed. It's going to help you identify individual types as well as individually look for the different weathering patterns and localities. Moose Lake, Minnesota, funny enough, has actually dubbed itself the capital of the world for agate. The Lake Superior agates occur in colors such as yellow, red, and orange due to the rich iron content. These agates were formed billions of years ago as a result of volcanic eruptions which caused molten lava rich in iron from deep below the surface to rise into flow. The lava trapped air bubbles, and after the lava had cooled underground, water seeped into those bubbles along with many minerals in layers and formed these agates. Due to the weathering of the volcanic rocks and glacial activity, these agates kind of flowed down to various locations that are now found throughout the state of Minnesota at pretty much various river basins, gravel pits, and gravel dumps. 
The public beaches along Lake Superior are a popular place for hunting these agates as well. And these agates can be found in central and northeastern Minnesota pretty prevalently. Many agates are found in gravel pits and along the banks of rivers and streams. So go out and check it out. Lake Superior agates are generally shaped as irregular spheres. They are made up of quartz and often reddened by iron and deposited in layers to create these concentric circles that look like rings, like kind of cross section of a tree. Despite their name though, Lake Superior agates can be found throughout much of Minnesota. That's because 10,000 years ago, glaciers carried them from far origins up in the Lake Superior region down lower and then receded back depositing them in random places almost. The agates are generally small, however large, very heavy weight agates are also found frequently. The larger and rare varieties of these agates can weigh up to 20 pounds. There are different kinds of Lake Superior agates found in Minnesota. The agates known as the fortification agate, which has unique patterns of sharp bands connected to each other and are the most common ones are, uh, that are found in Minnesota. And the water level agate is another variety of the fortification agate in which parallel horizontal bands can be seen. A rare and precious variety of Lake Superior agate is the eye agate, which has rounded bands on the surface that gives it the appearance of an eye. The peeled agates, water washed agates, and seamed agates are some of the more varieties of the Lake Superior agates found in the state. Occasionally, collectors find a gemstone with an almost perfectly smooth and natural surface. These are rare and are believed to have spent a long time tumbling back and forth in the waves of some long vanished wave battered rocky beach. They are called, appropriately enough, water washed agates. And to sneak something in that's not gold or a precious mineral per se, it's pipestone. It's for peace pipes that Native Americans have made from Pipestone, Minnesota. Now this stuff's pretty cool guys, I even got one. And I'll show you guys, it's right here on the wall. This was made by a fellow tribe member in Minnesota. Pipestone, Minnesota to be exact. And is, for ceremonial purposes, why I've got it back here. Consequently though, it is used by the Native Americans to make the ceremonial pipes, which are an integral part of the religious and civic ceremonies. Because of this specific use, the rock is commonly called pipestone. Now, tobacco was also something from Minnesota that a lot of people don't really remember, but it was Nicotina rustica, which was originally used primarily by the Eastern tribes, but Western tribes often mixed it with other herbs, barks, and plant matter in preparation commonly known as kaniknik. Now, the funny thing is, is that we grew and have seeds to the very rusticas that were used back then. And we enjoy doing a little bit of tobacco cultivation. We may throw some of that in some more of our videos here come the springtime. Now on the Thompsonite. The mineral Thompsonite is a form of zeolite and it's pretty freaking sweet, guys. Well, these minerals were formed at the same time as the Lake Superior agates as a result of the volcanic activity that took place billions of years ago along the Lake Superior's northern shoreline. Thompsonite occurs as rounded and banded structures with colors such as pink, white, beige, light brown, light yellow, light gray, and light orange. It's pretty varied. Some attractive and multicolored samples of Thompsonite can be found at Thompsonite Beach, which is located on the shores of Lake Superior up in Cook County. Moving on to Binghamite. Bingamite is an extremely rare variety of quartz. It's composed of long strands of hematite and geothite. Now, they occur in places that have rich iron deposits. Bingamite is found in colors such as gold, red, black, yellowish, and sometimes even multicolored. Bingamite is also called silkstone or cuyunite, and is a type of agate stone found only in the Cuyuna Iron Range near Crosby in Crow Wing County. The formation of the stone occurs near deposits of iron ore. The Cuyuna Iron Range of Minnesota is the only location where bingamite has been found. Last on the list, but not least, is fossils, guys. So there are a variety of fossils that you can find in various places within Minnesota. Fossils of marine animals such as corals and fish that are as old as 380 million years that belong to the Devonian era can be found at the north central region of Minnesota. This area also has fossils of oysters, snails, shark's teeth, and clams that belong to the Cretaceous period. In the Devonian age, between 416 million and 358 million years ago, only the southeastern corner of Minnesota was covered in water. The dashed line illustrates the equator in this picture. More than 2 million year old fossils of algae can be found in the Precambrian iron formation situated in the northeastern part of the state. 
Southeastern Minnesota is also home to fossils of cephalopods and trilobites from the Ordovician era. A great place to go hunting for these things is in Hill Annex Mine State Park. You can go there to discover marine fossils in northern Minnesota. As you arrive, you'll go over to the Cretaceous ore pile and hunt for fossils. You can search for shark's teeth, clams, and other ocean life. These fossils were formed around 86 million years ago when the sea covered half the area. Best of all, you can keep everything you find. All right, so that wraps up this video, guys. I hope it was informative, and I invite you to subscribe and follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and things like that. But regardless, keep an eye out. We're producing more videos all the time. And until then, remember, together we hunt and tell stories by firelight.